everybody so it is the 26th of July and we are less than a week away from the beginning of Garb August yay I'm so excited and um, while we're getting into that I have a couple of books that I'm working on getting reviews for so that we have some a little bit more slight quality before we get into Garb August and I've also finished my first uh, book for Garb August uh, which I'm going to review um, after the beginning of August. I know this sounds weird. Um, I'm probably going to be putting out a couple of different uh, reviews between now and then and you're going to see quite a bit more content from me uh, throughout between now and the end of August uh, because I have a ton of stuff I have that I want to read. Now whether or not I actually finish everything in time to get it up in time for Garb August we'll see. But I, I have some pretty ambitious plans. So so that's an update there. And there's two things, uh, while we do that, uh, there are two things that I kind of wanted to mishmash together. Um, one was, uh, there was another YouTuber who did a video on nine reasons why I'm a booktuber. And I realized I've never really done a sort of getting to know you um, video. Um, and, you know, because this is my channel, actually, you know what, I'll leave this on just because I know something else is going to happen. I just feel weird about looking at my headset all the time. Um, the, so the first, the first kind of getting to know you is why am I a booktuber? Um, so I thought I'd, I'd let you know. I, I've been doing this since... Probably late, I think the summer of 2020 was when I started. So yeah, I've been at this about two years. I think it started with Hot Girl Summer or Horror Girl Summer or whatever that was called. And that was when I started making, but like just doing little book reviews. And at the time, I believe that was around the time that I wanted to promote the horror anthology, uh, Women of Horror. Um, not just a pretty face uh, and I did some reviews with the authors and it was that was that was a lot of fun and I wanted to hopefully do some more video reviews with authors but unfortunately they none of the authors I've interviewed in the interim have wanted to do videos with me but we'll keep trying <laughs> so I guess there is sort of a straight line in how I got there to here so First of all, obviously, I love books. I love reading. Uh, I was a vociferous reader as a kid. And since, I'd say probably in the last 20 years, certainly since the rise of the internet, I don't read as much as I would like or as much as I used to. Although I still buy books like crazy, you know, thinking, oh yes, I'm going to read that someday. And then I just don't. <laughs> I put it on the shelf or I lose it or, you know, there's books everywhere. Which is going to be fun if I have to move. Hmm. And because I want to read some more, doing reviews at the end of the books that I read sort of makes me a little bit more accountable. And it also helps me um, sort of have a goal. Okay, I'm going to read this. I'm going to write a review on Goodreads and Amazon. I'm going to make a video about it. And um, a lot of the reason that I haven't been reading as much as I would like in the last, you know, 15, 20 years is just... I think everybody that's on the internet sort of suffers a little bit of ADD, but I actually have been diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. And some of the reason, um, sorry about that. So some of what I do to try and focus better on reading is to try and make sure I read some every day and uh, my attention span is one minute and 40 seconds. I've actually timed it, <laughs> if you can believe that, until I get bored and start looking around for something else to look at or do or think about, which of course, you know, with the internet just makes everything impossible. So what I do when I'm trying to focus on reading is I will set a timer for 10 minutes. Uh, you know, as, Car as George Carlin said, anybody can do anything for five minutes. I think I can read for 10 minutes. I set a timer for 10 minutes and there are a number of channels on YouTube that provide like deep focus study music and for some reason if I have 
the study music kind of playing very low in the background while I'm reading, that seems to cancel out some of the noise in my head so I can concentrate for that 10 minutes. And I find if I, you know, I set the timer, I read for 10 minutes. If I'm engaged, I'll read longer. And if not, then at least I've made that 10 minute goal for the day. And I can usually read, you know, 15 or 20 pages in that time. And so, and I'll just, I'll do that several times throughout the day. And I, because of this, I am a, a fairly slow reader. That's why I, I only usually only put up a couple of videos a month. Um, but I do have some sort of ambitious plans for Garb August. Whether it happens or not, you know, we'll get there. Or we'll try to get there at least. <laughs> um, so, as I said, Goodreads and Amazon are nice, but I, I like the more dynamic feel of, uh, of, you know, talking through my reviews and talking about the books and being able to show you and say, you know, I like this and blah, 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 right? Um, so a little bit about my background. When I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, I realized the only thing I ever wanted to be was a writer. And when I was trying to pick up a school program, I thought, hey, journalism, <laughs> journalism is a job. I can do that. I didn't get into my first choice for school, which was Ryerson journalism. Um, I mean, I showed up like an hour late and blew the audit or the uh, entrance exam. So, um, so the, the backup plan was I was going to get a three year degree from some other school and then go to Ryerson and do their two year journalism program, their second, second BA that they have, or they used to have. I don't think they do that anymore. Um, I was accepted into both Laurier and the University of Ottawa. And honestly, I would have preferred to go to Ottawa, but I didn't hear from them for ever and ever. And then I, I heard from Laurier and I thought, well, <laughs> I don't know what else to do. So I had already accepted Laurier's offer. And then I heard from Ottawa and it was like, well, <laughs> there's that. So, so I ended up going to Laurier. And what was kind of ironic was that I absolutely hated journalism. I hated print journalism. I didn't like the deadlines. I didn't like the stuff I had to write about. You know, I mean, it's actually kind of ironic. <laughs> but, it, and there were also, I mean, even at the, the little school paper that I was writing for, there were just so many politics and so much other stuff that I just didn't want to be part of. And it's like, well, if this is what it's like in the real world, nah, screw it. So what I did find out though, was that I really enjoyed broadcasting. Now, of course, got the face for radio. I'm never going to be on a TV screen anywhere, but I started getting involved with the local campus radio station and I absolutely loved it. I, while I was still in school, I spent two years uh, doing a show where I did a lot of interviews with local bands. And then the rest of the time was just an open format, like mostly indie music, a lot of Canadian content. And then I went home for a year. And then when I came back, I started doing a show with my friend Martin and we were on for 11 years. So it was other than the year I went home, I spent 15 years volunteering for college radio, college and community radio. And by the last three years, I was on the board of directors and more politics the radio station got defunded and the board of director and we, we lost our staff. So the board of directors started to take over the staff duties and it was an absolute shit show, unfortunately. And I just got really, really burned out trying to run the station, trying to be the volunteer and then trying to have my own life and my own job and everything else. So it was just like, that was the end of that. So that was about, <coughs> excuse me, 2010, that that happened. Excuse me. And then I decided that I wanted to try and go back to writing. And I got involved with the online horror community through, it was first through the forums, uh, through the different, there was, there was a, uh, there were a number of forums called Lefora. And there were like a lot of zombie publications. There were 
a couple of uh, small press publishers. Um, and through there, I sort of got in contact with a lot of small press horror authors. And I also found out that somebody I knew from high school was running a publishing company, which I thought was wonderful. And, you know, I just, and I, re I reconnected with a lot of people that I hadn't in many, many years. And I made a lot of new contacts um, and friends in the, in the online horror community. I mean, I have <laughs> several thousand uh, Facebook contacts and most of them are writers. And so that went for a while, uh, for quite a few years. I, I was writing some stuff and sending some stuff out and I've had a few things published and I've put out two, uh, two anthologies, uh, edited, edited two anthologies that I'm very proud of. Um, but you know, I mean, if you want to be a writer, you really got to hustle. And I tend to have a lot of crap going on and personal issues and money issues and you know family issues and all this other stuff and it saps your creativity after a while it really does so I haven't really written anything in some time so I decided to just kind of focus on putting that creative energy into my Facebook or into my Facebook and then also into my YouTube channel <laughs> Facebook blah, blah, blah. Um, but also through Facebook I started I have been uh, administrating a number of call for submissions pages uh, where we list publishers and all of the calls that they put out asking for work. And through that, I started volunteering with the Horror Tree and I started doing a lot of, uh, I started doing author interviews and I am actually the, nominally, <laughs> the uh, interview coordinator for the Horror Tree. So, you know, if you are an author and you, a horror author, and you're interested in getting an interview, by all means, contact the Horror Tree and we'll see if we can set somebody up. Now, we do offer, we, we do work on a volunteer basis, and so some, we have more requests than we can get out there, but I do try to, you know, see if people want to interview, and when I have time, I do interviews myself as well. Um, and like I said, I've been trying to get people to do video interviews, but so far not too many bites. Um, and I guess that's what kind of led me here. So there is a straight line from reading to writing to school to media and communications. <laughs> and quite frankly, for many years now, I've mostly used my degree to argue with people on online about pop culture to Facebook to the online horror community to the horror tree to author interviews and now to reviews on YouTube and that's you know that's pretty much why I do this I I am a big horror fan I like to read and I like to do reviews that are hopefully you know some you know that, that people in, are going to enjoy and that there's a little bit of, uh, you know, more of a dynamic quality to, uh, to them than just throwing them up on Amazon or Goodreads, which I know does help with the algorithms and it does help authors. Um, cause you know, <laughs> if you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. <laughs> if you can't be a writer, then I am all for supporting independent writers and for helping out where I can. And if I can't help with money, then I will certainly help, you know, spread the good news. So that's, that's, why I'm here basically <laughs> all right so the uncomfortable stuff about myself uh <laughs> is now over I hope you have a little bit better idea of you know what I'm doing here um now as a lead into Garb August Criminali who is kind of you know the <laughs> mastermind <laughs> the evil genius behind this event uh has a trashy books tag and I would like to address some of the questions asked by the Trashy Books tag ahead of Garbagas. So number one, Trashy Books are often dismissed by the critics. Which, what is a book that is regarded as trash which you think has artistic value? Okay, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. Well, I mean, not that anybody really cares, but I'm going to say Twilight, and here's why. Now, I have not read the book. 
I saw the movie and it was actually better than I expected. But where it has value. Yes, there are quite a lot of relationship issues. Yes, there are issues with the characters, with the writing, with the plot, with everything. And yes, they took the fangs out of our monster boyfriends and made them sparkly. Okay, I'll give you all that. All the issues with Twilight are issues with Twilight. Not, you know, I'm not going to contend that. Where it has value and where I will always defend it. Two points. Number one, in the American education system, in a number of places, Twilight is what is considered high-low. Now, that is faint praise, but that stands for high, com uh, so, sorry, high interest, low comprehension. High interest, low comprehension. And what that means is that there are kids who don't like to read, but who were interested in Twilight. And you know what? Anything that gets kids reading who would not read otherwise, I consider that fantastic. I consider that genius. So you know what? Let kids have Twilight if they want it, if they like it, if it gets them interested in books. Yay! <laughs> so I will always defend it. I will always defend it on that, on that basis. And the second one is that we slam the work of writers and we often forget that they're people too, that they're one of us or they were at some point. Stephanie Myers, um, she was obviously, she was just like a middle class mom. She wrote, you know, between, <laughs> between laundry and taking her kids to soccer and whatever else. And she had a particularly harsh review, but on the, uh, on the same day, uh, or no, she got a particularly harsh uh, rejection from a publisher on the same day that her book was favorably reviewed in Publishers Week Weekly. And this was so wonderfully petty, but such a great fuck you. She stapled the review to the rejection and said, don't need you anymore. So, you know, I will always respect that. <laughs> you know, she made it. She, she's one of us and she, she became fabulously successful and I cannot fault her that. And again, anything that will get kids reading, I'm quite happy. Uh, second one, critics often love books with extreme or challenging content. Which critically praised, praised book did you think was trash? Okay. <laughs> I don't think this was extreme or challenging content, but it has long been considered a classic. But On Walden Pond... <sighs> okay. Thoreau writes these lovely little diatribes about leaves and about, you know, his passion for, for, for nature and for living deliberately and being his best person. But this is a guy, this is just another entitled douche bro whose grand adventure in the woods, he went to his friend Emerson's cabin on the lake. His mother did his laundry for him. And every Sunday, he would invite himself to Emerson's house for dinner, much to the annoyance of Emerson's wife, okay? This was not some grand loneliness, you know, self-sufficient, libertarian, heroic, heroic nonsense. This was a guy who just... <laughs> His wife, other women were taking care of him. And he just was totally entitled, and I'm really, then that, that just irritates me. Okay. <laughs> I'm way too passionate about this. Number three, not everyone approves of trashy books. What's a book you wouldn't read in public? Okay, so one of the books that I found that I just thought was so freaking glorious I really hope I get a chance to read it, but if I don't, if there is another Garbogist, I am absolutely going to read this. <laughs> Kidnapped by the Pirate by Kira Andrews. <laughs> Listen to this. A breeches ripping gay romance featuring a tough pirate too afraid to love, a plucky captain. Half his age, enemies to lovers, first times in exploration, and of course a happy ending. Yay! <laughs>
I mean, I'm not a big fan of bodice rippers. I'm probably not going to read them in public. But this one is just, just wow. This is like too much. So, I mean, it's it's everything. It's everything that I think is fantastic for Garb August. I hope I get a chance to read it. But yes, I have found it on Kindle Unlimited and I am most definitely going to at least give it a shot. <laughs> so the next question. Books about killer animals are almost always trashy. What animal would you least like to be attacked by? I have a deep and abide, abiding phobia of bed bugs. Anything that's bitey and itchy, fleas, lice, I hate them, but I can handle them. Bed bugs, I just... Ugh, ugh. And there is actually a horror novel called Bed Bugs. I won't even touch it. Mm -mm -mm. Trashy books often flourish in specific genres. What's your favorite trashy subgenre? Honestly, I am a longtime fan of Jackie Collins, uh, you know, Sydney Sheldon. The books that are plot, 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 shallow characterization, beautiful people, exotic locations, lots of money, everybody has lots of sex. Fantastic. Love that stuff. Because you can, you can burn through them in a couple of days. They're, you know, fantastically entertaining and you, you don't really have to think too much about them because you know what's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> I think Jackie Collins is pretty much a, a, a subgenre in herself at this point. And I do intend to read some of her books for Garb August. Or Garb August. So, uh, number six. Famous people love to milk their fans by publishing books. Which celebrity would you like to read a trashy novel by? Now, I thought about that. And I think Angelina Jolie would be my, my pick. Um, because she has had a really intro. Okay, first of all, I like her. I, I like her. I think I, I like her humanitarian efforts. I like that she has, she seems pretty down to earth considering the life that she's lived. Um, she has a beautiful family. I just like her. But her, she rarely makes a good movie. I mean, she, she has made some real dogs, okay? Just absolute terrible movies. So she sort of exists in this weird twilight between, you know, is she watchable? Is she terrible? Is she, and, and I think that between her experiences and especially the kind of ridiculous stuff that she did when she was in her 20s, like, you know, with the little vials of blood with Billy Bob, you know, all the stuff she did before she became a mom. I think she could write a Rip Roaring novel. I think she'd be a lot of fun, so. Number seven, trashy books have the best covers. Which book on your shelves has the trashiest cover? Um, I'm gonna say when I was a kid, my mother had all of the V.C. Andrews, uh, the V.C. Andrews novels, the ones with the, I think it was like the, I think it's called like a gate fold or something. They were paperback and on the front there was like the, there was like some kind of graphic and then there was like a little cutout and you'd see somebody's face and then you'd open it and then there, there'd be all these like wickedly pale, beautiful children with bags on like scary ass bags under their eyes and then somebody looming in the back right so so you'd have flowers in the attic and there'd be like kathy and then there's like the grandmother in the back or you'd have my sweet audrina and she's like sitting in a rocking chair and there's like her there's her creepy dad in the back and there so so you'd always have this uh these these great uh novels and you, you'd open the covers and those were the best covers ever i don't like the modern covers that they have now i think they're stupid and they're not nearly as cool as the ones from the 80s uh, number eight, trashy books often contain adult themes. What's a book you read before you were old enough to? <laughs> well, my mother loved her trashy books. I mean, she read all of them. Danielle Steele, Sidney Sheldon, Judith Krantz, Jackie Collins, Stephen King. I mean, just name after name after name considered like this sort of midless. Although... <sighs> I think this is what makes me think I'm not quite as well versed in what's trash and what's not because I grew up with all this stuff, but none of it is on the Garb August list. I mean, we have to go lower. We have to actually go lower for the Garb August, right? Um, 
so I would say most of them. <laughs> the my first adult book that I read, I was eight, and it was Carrie, and that wasn't quite as, you know, not adult. Um, but I read all of them. I mean, you know, starting by the time I was eight, I. I like I was still in the single digits when I started reading Flowers in the Attic, when I started reading Stephen King, when I started reading, and I was probably between the ages of 11 and 14 when I read the Jackie Collins books and like just anything, right? Um, and yes, I was, so in 1986 when it came out, I was 11. I was the same age as the kids in the book. Think about that scene, that scene everybody talks about, right? But it didn't phase me because it, even at that age, I mean, obviously hindsight being sort of clouding my judgment, um, what Stephen King was doing with that narratively was trying, like he, he, it says, you know, she was trying to bring them back together. It's a, it's a book about the power of love and friendship and how that bond can overcome the monster and how that belief in that bond is what overcomes the monster. And when you're that age, you do believe in it. And I believed in it enough that seemed appropriate at the time, I guess, as an adult, I think, ah, but, <laughs> but you know, as a kid, I, it just was part of the story, right? If you were a character in a shifter romance, what creature would you want you or your partner to shift into? Now, I have been thinking about that, and as somebody who's basically ace and who basically, you know, not really all that interested in these uh, ridiculous romances or shifters or any of that kind of stuff, I think I would want to change into a porcupine. Because, you know, nobody comes near the porcupines, but Good God, are they adorable. Like, look, look at, here's, here's Teddy the porcupine. Teddy bear found some pumpkins for Halloween. Eating the pumpkins. Look at how Teddy cute pumpkin. he is. I love the little noises he makes. Because you, you just know, like, that woman is going, Hey, Teddy, 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 and that, that weird whiny voice. And these are like, fuck off, lady, I'm eating. So, yes, I think I would want to be a, a, an adorable porcupine that nobody can actually get near. So, uh, tag the trashiest booktubers you know. I'm not going to tag anybody, but you know what? If you want to participate, if you want to talk about books, if you want to, you know, come over and make some comments and uh, tell me what, who you turn into and, you know, what books you'd be embarrassed to see, be, be seen reading in public, by all means. Uh, so we will see you in the coming days, and I'm probably going to be recording some things ahead, so I'll be releasing them, like, as they come up, but... Um, I've got a lot of stuff coming up for Garbagus. So looking forward to that. Hope you're reading lots of horror. Have a great day.